what happens when you accidentally write a character that's way too strong to be killed? Well, if that character happens to be the main character, that's not necessarily the worst thing. Plenty of people love the trope that the main character is by far and away the strongest person in the universe. There's something oddly reassuring about watching a show where you know that every time the main character shows up, the problem's solved. And not only that, but you never really have to worry about the main character being in any real danger. Now, I would argue that almost every single anime in existence, you never really have to worry about the main character being in any kind of danger. I mean, there are exceptions to that rule looking directly at you, Akame Ga Kale. But like I said, a lot of people like their main characters like they like a weighted blanket soothing, protective, and puts you right to sleep. However, problems do arise when you write an incredibly broken character who's not the main character. Even more so when that incredibly broken character isn't not only the main character, but is also an antagonist. See, because the thing about bad guys is that eventually they're supposed to lose. So what happens when you give them abilities and stats and feats that make it appear as though that they can't lose. Well, if you're Maisashi Kishimoto, one of the ways that you can go is you can simply just make that bad guy get a chakra disease and then as he's about to kill some of your favorite characters, that chakra disease kicks in and, well, takes him off the map. That was the case for Kimimaru, that was the case for Itachi, and that might still be the case for some characters to come in the Naruto universe. You see, because while one would believe that Kishimoto learned his lesson, that lesson being, hey, maybe we stop writing incredibly broken characters on the wrong side of the action, and that way we don't have to find plot devices to take them out. In Boruto, he's dug himself into the exact same hole that he dug himself into with the likes of Kimimaru and Itachi, characters with an insane roster of powers that act as antagonists that are too far ahead of everybody else in terms of power to be a viable threat or rival to anybody else in the story. And while one could argue that there's a couple of characters like this in Boruto, the one we're going to talk about today is Daemon. See, because while well, yes, at one point or another, Shibai Otsutsuki is gonna be introduced to the story and as the god of Otsutsukis, who's able to transcend above a physical body, obviously he's gonna be so broken, something needs to change about him in order to make him beatable, but he also hasn't truly been introduced to the story yet. And therefore, there's a hypothetical infinite amount of time before Shibai gets introduced for people like Boruto and Kawaki to get strong enough to battle against Shibai. So while Shibai currently doesn't exist in the story, we can't really say that he'll never be beatable because by the time that Shibai actually plays a crucial role in Boruto, Boruto and Kawaki might be infinitely more powerful than they currently are. But there is at least one character who currently exists in Boruto who is too strong to be a viable rival to anybody in the story. And that one person is Daemon. Now, interestingly enough, and also probably somewhat scarily, Daemon is able to accomplish this level of power with only a fraction of Shibai's power. See, because Daemon is a cyborg created to protect Ada. And while him being a cyborg makes him incredibly strong, he also received Shinjutsu from Shibai's left behind body. In particular, Daemon received one Shinjutsu. And that one Shinjutsu is reflection. See, Daemon has the ability to passively reflect any attacks that are intended towards him back onto the person trying to attack him. And these attacks are launched back at the person trying to attack him with the level of severity that they were planning to attack Daemon with. So let's say, hypothetically, I was gonna go pat Daemon on the head slightly roughly. There's a possibility that if I was doing that with malintent, that that would be considered an attack and therefore reflected onto me. However, because the intent of this attack wasn't all that serious, I wouldn't get that much of a reflection. However, if hypothetically I pulled out a pistol and aimed it at Daemon's head and went to pull the trigger, before I could even pull the trigger, a bullet would go through my head, which leaves a lot of people with a very logical question. Okay, so let's say hypothetically Daemon goes on a murderous rampage. How do we defeat him? How do you get past an ability that's able to passively reflect all incoming attacks? That is to say, how do you work around perfect defense. And as it appears as though Daemon is one of the key concerns for the good guys in Boruto, as Sarada and Sumire have to walk on eggshells while in the presence of Ada to make sure that they don't aggravate Daemon, it's very clear and obvious that everybody from the good guys to the bad guys in Boruto are trying to scheme ways to beat this child. Because unfortunately, when it really comes down to it, as it currently stands, Daemon is the strongest person in the Boruto universe. However, that may not still be the case. See, there hasn't necessarily been hints as to how one would be able to defeat this reflection ability, but unless Daemon is gonna come fight for the good guys and then become the main character of the story because he's somehow stronger than the MC, 
there's gotta have to be a way to defeat this perfect defense. Because even if, hypothetically, he did come to fight for the good guys, if there was no holes in his defense, why does anybody else need to fight? So from a logical and narrative standpoint, there has to be a problem with Daemon's ultimate defense. And today, we're gonna try and crack that code. Well, ironically, not talking about code. I think we've all seen on full display that code is not capable of defeating Daemon. Which is why today we're talking how to kill the strongest character in the Naruto universe. Before we get to scheming on how to kill a child, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you like the idea of me cooking up schemes from your favorite anime, you're gonna love my other channel, The Weeb Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto and Boruto, I talk all other anime. Or if you just want to hear me talk about anime, then go ahead and follow my anime podcast, Who Talk is Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Or if you want to look like you're somebody who talks about anime, go ahead and pop into my brand new merch store where you can pick up some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. Boy, oh boy, are the plugs down to a science. Ironic, because my hair plugs, for some reason, are not working with me today. But before we get into all that, today we got to talk about one of our favorite recurring sponsors to the page... Hello Fresh. Listen, we all know life can get hectic. And unfortunately, one of the things that happens when life gets hectic is that the variety in the food that you eat kind of goes by the wayside. We've all been at the point in our lives when we ordered burritos for the third time this week. But Hello Fresh wants to make sure that you keep meal times exciting with over 40 options every single week, ensuring to you that there's always something delicious to discover every week. But more than that, HelloFresh also makes sure to use in-season ingredients, so you can taste the freshness of fall in every single bite of the meals you cook up. Which is why HelloFresh makes sure that produce travels from the farm to your door to ensure peak freshness. And on top of that, HelloFresh is easy. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. The ingredients arrive at your door pre-portioned and ready to cook. And the bow on top is that these ingredients come with a step-by-step -step recipe, pictures included, on how to make those ingredients into a beautiful and tasty meal. See, HelloFresh has done a ton for me. Not only did it allow me to lose 50 pounds and maintain the physique I currently have, but it also has vastly increased my cooking ability. It's introduced me to ingredients that I never would have thought to use in the first place. But there's a big difference between showing and telling. So let's head to the kitchen. So tonight we're cooking gingery coconut soup. And honestly, before I started HelloFresh, I never thought making meals like this by myself was a possibility. So making soups like these are some of my favorite meals to make with HelloFresh. They're always light, yet super filling. And the beauty of HelloFresh is you're always cooking two portions. So you can either cook for you and somebody you love or yourself for two days. Mmm. I am a good cook. So what are you guys waiting for? Go to HelloFresh.com and use code 16 NCHammer23 for 16 meals for free and free shipping. The offer is for new subscriptions only and varies by plan over nine boxes. That's code 16 NCHammer23 for 16 free meals. This fall, we don't let our standards fall. So what happens when you have an invincible 14 year old that's battling against the plot that your main character is trying to achieve? Well, you make them sick. But unfortunately, this 14 year old is healthy. I actually don't know how old Damon is. I'm assuming somewhere between 12 and 14. How old is he more? She's probably like 12 feet. He's probably like 12 as well. He's a cyborg. Does it really matter? Do the cyborgs age? I don't think they do. I mean, Ada doesn't look older, right? The concept of them starting as babies seems stupid. But that being said, if you were making a cyborg, why would you make it like a 12 year old boy? Ah, uh, yes, ideal peak performance. 12 year old boys. Subscribing to that Kevin Spacey ideology, I guess. Anyways, how do you kill him? Damon, that is not 12 year old boy. You get it. The American school system has the other one down packed enough. I'm gonna stop making these jokes now. Well, fortunately, the Naruto universe is such a wide and vast universe filled with numerous different types of powers. And because there's five different elemental releases and yin and yang and karma markings and jinchuriki, there's basically nothing you can't accomplish in the Naruto universe through its power system. You wanna control shadows, you control shadows. You wanna shoot fire, you shoot fire. You wanna make a giant mech suit that has a sword or a bow, you can do that. You wanna hop between dimensions, you wanna summon a shark, you wanna summon a hawk, you wanna throw a shuriken that travels between dimensions. Pretty much anything can be accomplished in the world of Naruto. And therefore, fortunately, there's a ton of possible possible ways to answer the question, how do you defeat Daemon? Now, the reason that I'm making today's video is actually because I received an email pretty much asking this exact question. However, in this email, the user also proposed a possible way in which Daemon could be defeated. So this email asked the question of whether or not Daemon's reflectability would work against Reaper Death Seal. And if it did work against Reaper Death Seal, 
What would that look like? And that's what got me thinking about the possible ways that Daemon could be defeated. However, because his email is what kicked off all of this in the first place, I'd like to address Reaper Death Seal first. See, obviously, we don't know anything for sure, so everything from here on out is going to be speculation, because we've only really seen Daemon's reflectability in use two to three times. However, in those two to three times, we were told plenty about how it works. So actually, before we dive into our first scenario, let's cover what we know about Daemon's reflectability. Daemon's reflectability not only reflects intent, but also also action and it appears as though it chooses its activation based on speed see because when a common foot soldier at the car hideout tries to pull out their weapon to attack daemon they receive the attack of that weapon reflected onto them before they can even get their weapon out of its holster so daemon's reflectability does work on the intent before the attack even happens however daemon's reflectability also works on actual attacks both physical and ninjutsu see as we've seen code boruto and kawaki all try to mount physical attacks against against Daemon, and every single one of them without fail was reflected. Beyond that, we've also seen Code try to strike Daemon with his claw marks when Daemon was attacking Bug at the car hideout. What's interesting about this is that Daemon wasn't looking and also not paying attention to Code, which tells us that Daemon's reflection ability is instantaneous and isn't done through his own will, meaning that any attack launched at Daemon is reflected reflexively and the reflection of code trying to launch his claw markings onto daemon actually just ended up putting his claw markings on him and what's interesting about this however is that it unfortunately disproves a theory that a lot of people have well not a hundred percent disproves it but definitely doesn't make it look good see one of the most common ways that people talk about that one would be able to defeat daemon is by attacking him with an attack that doesn't actually seem like an attack like, let's say hypothetically i was an 85 foot tall monster but i was really excited to see you so i ran up to you and i gave you a hug but you're a human who's five foot five and when i hug you i squish you to death kind of like lenny in mice of men that hug wasn't meant to be an attack in fact that hug was done out of my love for you however because of the disproportionate gap in our strength you died. Now, obviously, in order for this theory to work against Daemon, we don't need a disproportionate strength gap. But the idea is if you were to launch an attack that wasn't intended as an attack against Daemon, there's a possibility his reflectability would not reflect said ability. And while I do think that's a distinct possibility, I think the fact that Daemon instinctively reflected Code's claw marks kind of actually takes a little bit of air out of that theory. See, because here's the thing. Code's claw marks by themselves aren't really an attack. Code's claw marks are much akin to Minato placing a seal somewhere for his flying Raijin. And while technically it was stated that if Minato got his hand on you and placed the flying Raijin seal on you, that you were as good as dead, because at any point in time, he could teleport to you and just stab you a bunch. The act of placing that seal for flying Raijin on you isn't necessarily an attack. It doesn't cause you any physical harm, and while it could be used to physically harm you at another time, one could just as easily make the argument that Daemon having Code's claw markings on him would also possibly be useful down the line. Like, let's say, hypothetically, somehow Daemon finds himself in a pinch. Code having claw markings on Daemon would allow him to come out of those claw markings and help Daemon. Daemon could be handed things through the claw markings, like weapons or food. The claw markings are not inherently an attack or evil. However, where I think we can pump a little bit of air back into this theory is the fact that Daemon's reflectability judges on intent, and Code was not launching these claw markings with the intent of helping Daemon, but rather to hurt and kill Daemon. And therefore, because the intent was to hurt, Daemon's ability reflected said claw markings. And this reaction, as Code figured out, is instantaneous. So, so long as what you're aiming at Daemon is done with the intent of eventually hurting him, regardless of whether or not it's an offensive technique, it will be reflected. So if hypothetically you opened a portal to outer space where hypothetically Daemon couldn't breathe, and then you simply just walked through the portal with him, it probably wouldn't work because you opened that portal to outer space to hurt Daemon. So the biggest thing is intent. And so far as we know, Daemon has the ability to reflect physical attacks and ninjutsu attacks. If you can even call Code's claw markings ninjutsu attacks. I actually don't know what Code's claw markings are. Is it a karma ability or is it a shinobi wear ability? Regardless, it pretty much speaks to the fact that any different type of attack can be reflected. So onto the Reaper Death Seal. How would it work in a battle against Daemon? Well, the user who emailed me identified three possibilities, all of which I found to be pretty interesting. Those three possibilities were Reaper Death Seal works, Reaper Death Seal is reflected onto the caster, and Reaper Death Seal is reflected onto the caster, and the Shinigami. And ironically, all three answers are not only equally likely, but also 
equally interesting. See, let's for a second hypothesize about how possibly somebody would be able to use Reaper Death Seal on Daemon. We know that Daemon's reflectability works instinctively. Whether or not he knows an attack is coming, it will be reflected. Now, that doesn't look great for Reaper Death Seal, which is kind of all about surprise. As you can't see the Shinigami and its fist grabbing your soul, until it's too late. But if Daemon's able to reflect attacks that he doesn't know are coming, then one would assume that he'd be able to reflect the Shinigami's hand without knowing it was coming. However, does this apply to dimension traveling attacks? See, the Shinigami is not only a god in its own right, the god of death, but also a god that holds an entire universe in its own stomach. Not to mention that the Reaper Death Seal is essentially a summoning contract with the god of death, and most likely that god of death comes from a separate dimension. So there's a distinct possibility that because that Shinigami Shinigami comes from a different dimension that its attack would count as interdimensional. Therefore, there's the possibility that Daemon's reflectability only is able to reflect things from its own dimension, which would mean that Daemon would be caught as surprised as anybody else. The second possibility is that Reaper Death Seal is reflected onto the caster. Now, this technically is the conclusion out of the three conclusions that I deem to be the most likely. I believe that the Shinigami does exist in another dimension, and I believe that it's summoned to our dimension through Reaper Death Seal. However, just because it's invisible to the person whose soul it's trying to grab until it grabs their soul doesn't necessarily mean it's traveling interdimensionally, at least after it's been summoned. And therefore, I believe Daemon, without even actively knowing, would reflect the hand of the Shinigami and it would just go back and grab the soul of the person who brought the Shinigami up in the first place. And then their soul has to fight their soul in eternity in the Shinigami's stomach, and this was all useless. And the third possibility is the funniest out of the possibilities, and that is to say that Daemon reflects the Shinigami's hand, and not only does it reflect onto the caster of Reaper Death Seal, but also the Shinigami, who technically was trying to actively attack Daemon. So now we have the caster of Reaper Death Seal who had the intent to harm Daemon, and the Shinigami who doesn't necessarily have intent, but is trying to harm Daemon. Daemon, both having the curse of Reaper Death Seal reflected onto them, which could possibly lead to the death of the literal god of death. Or it would just nullify the jutsu. We don't really know. But Nick, you're saying that the second possibility is the most likely out of all these possibilities, but you said in the beginning of all of this that these three possibilities all had the same likelihood of being possible. Yes, that's because all three of these possibilities have 0% likelihood of happening. Why do all three of these possibilities have 0% likelihood of happening? Daemon doesn't have a soul. He's a cyborg, a robot, a man-made creation. Well, at least, maybe. So we know for a fact that Delta is a full-on robot, an entity that can be replicated over and over and over again simply by having a personality uploaded to its mainframe so it can run around and pretend to be Amado's daughter. And while technically the term cyborg more refers to humans who have been augmented with mechanics, we've never been given evidence that Daemon and Ada existed prior to Kara. While it is stated that their bodies have been upgraded with shinobi wear, whether or not Daemon and Ada are full robot or humans augmented to become more robot-like, we just don't really know. But even if Daemon did start out as a human and is now currently existing as a cyborg in the truest sense of the word, the possibility of somebody using Reaper Death Seal on him is still next to zero. One, Nobody from the new gen knows it. Hell, basically nobody from the old gen knew it. Two, who's sacrificing themselves to take out Daemon? And three, the risk is way too high. I mean, like we said, the most likely out of all of these unlikely scenarios is the fact that the Shinigami's hand is reflected onto the caster. If you're battling against somebody whose entire ability is to reflect any techniques you use against them onto you, you don't use the one hit kill technique. So what are the other possibilities for wiping this child off the map? Well, ironically, the answer might lie in another manga entirely. See, recently in JJK, a technique very similar to Daemon's was defeated. And not because of some in-universe power that can't be replicated. It wasn't like, oh, when I gather my cursed energy in my right index finger, I can nullify all of your techniques and now your techniques are dumb. It was actually like a lot of things that happened in JJK very well explained and also very logical. See, the way that this similar technique was defeated is that the person trying to defeat this similar technique didn't attack the person who had the reflective but instead attacked beyond them. See, let's go back to our gun analogy. Let's say hypothetically, I wanna shoot you. I don't know what you did, but you're now on the wrong end of a gun. If I aim at your forehead or at the back of this chair, does that technically make a difference? In the real world, no. Not at all, because the bullet's trajectory will always be the same, and that bullet's trajectory will not be good for me regardless. However, in the world of JJK and Boruto, it does matter. See, because in Boruto specifically, if I was saying, I'm gonna shoot that chair, and if Daemon gets in the way, uh-oh, it's a possibility that because I'm intending to harm the chair and not Daemon, that his ability won't try to counter it. And thus, so long as you're aiming your attacks behind Daemon, 
you should be able to hit him. So let's say hypothetically, Boruto is battling it out against Daemon and Daemon is standing in front of a wall. Boruto could create a Rasengan and be like, I'm going to destroy that wall behind Daemon. And because he's aiming at the wall and not Daemon, that Rasengan may be able to land. Now, this is only if Daemon's reflectability only works on intent. However, if Daemon's reflectability also works on just anything approaching his space, then unfortunately this wouldn't work. Because regardless of the intent of your attack or your bullet, it's still gonna get reflected. Which brings us back to our most common argument for how somebody would defeat Daemon, attacking without the intent of harming. Like our 85 foot tall accidental squish hug. See, Daemon can come into physical contact with people who he wants to. Daemon can jump on the back of Code or Boruto. He can lay in the lap of Ada. So we know that his reflectability isn't always activated. Now, does this mean that Daemon has to physically turn off his reflectability? We don't know. But considering the fact that Daemon's reflectability has worked while he was holding on to Boruto and Kawaki was trying to attack him, this kind of makes me lean closer to intent as the motivator for all reflections. See, because in this moment, Daemon was able to make contact with Boruto while also reflecting Kawaki. And if it was just a hard switch where anything I come into contact with or that's going to come into contact with me is reflected when the switch is on, that scenario wouldn't work. So that means in order to attack Daemon in a way that would work, you would not only have to be somewhat trusted by him, but also attack in a way that he didn't deem as an attack. So how does one attack somebody who's the strongest person in the universe in a way that they don't deem as an attack, but is also deadly enough to kill them? Well, I guess the answer is you don't kill them. See, the long running theory that we've had on this channel is that the way that Daemon will be defeated will have something to do with Dojutsu. And more importantly than that, probably Genjutsu from a Dojutsu. See, personally, I believe that Sarada's two MS abilities will be an Amaterasu spinoff that burns with white flames, that heals anybody it burns, and also burns the malice out of their heart, that is to say, brings light to their life, and a Genjutsu that brings people to her truth, or brainwashes people into her stance or ideology. And in this way, Sarada will be able to undo Ada's brainwashing and also cover up for the lack of healing abilities she has since she doesn't have the chakra control to study under Sakura. And while technically I believe the person who will be battling against Daemon isn't Sarada, as I believe that Himawari has been elected as his rival, I believe these two techniques could technically possibly be used against Daemon. Because in Sarada's heart of heart, these MS abilities aren't used to harm people, but to bring light to their lives, to enlighten them. And thus is a possibility that she could use these MS abilities on Daemon to swing him to their side. Now, this doesn't really answer the question of how do you beat Daemon? And now that Daemon's on the side of the good guys, what's stopping him from battling against everybody? But I'm more just using Sarad as an example. It's a possibility that if you find a way to attack with the intent to help, you can harm Daemon. The only problem is making that intended helping Jutsu somehow deadly enough to take out Daemon. However, I don't believe that Daemon will be battling against Sarada, but I do believe that Daemon will be battling against Himawari. Otherwise, the scene of him bursting out of a building to find Himawari because he found her to be the only interesting person in the village was kind of useless. But why would Daemon be interested in Himawari? Why would he identify her as a rival? Well, the current theory that me and a lot of other people have is that Himawari is going to awaken the Tenseigon because her parents had Hagoromo and Hamura Chakra and she herself has the Byakugan. And it's a possibility that the Tenseigon is in fact a Shinjutsu. See, we're not entirely sure what the list of Shinjutsus currently is. We understand that the Senrigan and Daemon's reflectability are Shinjutsu. We understand that Shibai had a myriad of Shinjutsu that allowed him to change the weather and terraform planets, but the Tenseigon is one of the most powerful abilities we've seen in the entirety of the Naruto universe, and it is an ability solely usable by the Otsutsuki, the people who use Shinjutsu. So it's a possibility that Daemon's reflect Shinjutsu ability actually can't reflect Shinjutsu. And this is why he finds Himawari so interesting, because she's the only person who's not his sister who wields a Shinjutsu. And thus, she's the only person in the entirety of Konoha who would ever stand a legitimate chance against him in combat. But unfortunately, for that theory to be true, a couple other theories need to happen, so... Who knows? Though, if Himawari doesn't awaken the Ten Sagon, I will literally riot. Another interesting thing about Daemon's reflectability, however, is also the fact that it doesn't activate when he goes to attack people. See, one could very much make the argument that the act of attacking somebody is kind of like attacking yourself, with every action having an equal and opposite reaction. Now, would that be getting way too into Newtonian physics for an anime slash manga? Absolutely. But what it does mean is that Daemon has the ability to attack other people. That is to say that Daemon can come into contact with other people while he's attacking. And that might actually have the possibility 
of leading to his demise. Regardless of whether or not we want to take into account that damage is undoubtedly done to your fist when you punch something, and therefore, unless Daemon isn't damaged at all by his own punches, that he can receive damage while doling out damage. This means that the only way to defeat Daemon would be to have a technique that would take him out if you came into contact with him. And wouldn't you know it, there's a couple of those techniques in the Boruto universe. Most specifically, one of them was just revealed. Boruto's new technique, Rasengan Uzuhiko, uses the rotation of the planet to cover him in essentially a defensive Rasengan. And if Boruto comes into contact with you, or you come into contact with him, that defensive Rasengan leeches onto you. It then pumps the power of the entire rotating planet into you, and that rotation will slowly but surely kill you. Meaning that Boruto, much in the same capacity as Daemon, should never be touched. Therefore, if hypothetically somebody like Daemon was to try and attack Boruto and land an attack on him, there's a possibility that Rasengan Uzuhiko, which has no intent, mind you, would be able to leak onto his body. See, because here's the thing. Boruto pre-activates Rasengan Uzuhiko before a fight. Now, that activation of Rasengan Uzuhiko has nothing to do with Daemon. So, so long as Rasengan Uzuhiko is activated with no ill intent towards Daemon, and since the Jutsu itself is also automatic and therefore has no intent, intent or will, this means that if Boruto and Daemon were to fight, they'd be stuck in a standstill of neither of them being able to come into contact with the other. Assuming that Boruto's activation of Rasengan Usuhiko prior to the battle doesn't count as malintent towards Daemon. But when you consider the fact that the activation of Rasengan Usuhiko is to stop Daemon from attacking him and therefore to hurt Daemon, there's a possibility it could reflect onto Boruto. Another great example of this is the Abarame Rinkaichu. Now, we've only ever seen Tarune Abarame use this technique, but the Rinkaichu allows Abarabi members to cover themselves in nano-sized bugs. And these nano-sized bugs are flesh-eating parasites. And anybody the Abarame clan member who's using these Rinkaichu come into contact with will have these flesh-eating parasites transferred onto their body, leading to an all-but-immediate defeat. And while Tarune Abarame is said to be dead, Shino is said to be compatible with these bugs. So once again, and I feel like I'm screaming into a black hole, Shino is one of the most important people in Boruto and he's completely sidelined. You know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make a whole video about this. I'm furious. Now, another possibility for battling against Daemon is for him to be sealed. And, and I know what you're saying, Nick, sealing away Daemon sounds a lot like an attack. Well, I guess sort of, but I guess sealed isn't necessarily the right word. See, here's the thing. Daemon doesn't have the ability to fly and he can't travel between dimensions. If hypothetically somebody with dimension traveling abilities was to be like, oh, Daemon here, fight me in this other dimension. And then they just warped away. You could just try Trap Daemon in that dimension. Now, this wouldn't be a ceiling per se, but it would effectively seal him as far away from Earth as possible. And so long as Daemon ended up in that dimension of his own free will, it wouldn't be registered as an attack. And even if it was registered as an attack, how would that be reflected onto you? Oh, uh, you opened a portal to another dimension, and now you're a portal to another dimension. It, just, it doesn't make sense. And I actually think this is technically the best way to defeat Daemon, but it's unfortunately the most boring. It'd be like trying to get your dog to go in the car when they don't want to go on a ride they just be like come on Daemon come on come on Daemon go go through the portal go go through the portal and like that would be funny but I think everybody wants a Daemon versus Himawari fight and the last possibility falls into the same category likely but boring see because here's the thing we've only ever seen Daemon reflect things with intent right but what about external factors things that happen in nature things with no intent that just happen through sheer chaos like let's say hypothetically Madara actually grabbed a third meteor from the sky during the fourth great shinobi world war but it took 15 or so years to get here. If that meteor was hurtling towards the Earth and it just happened to hit Daemon, would the meteor be reflected? A meteor has no intent, and Madara definitely wasn't trying to hit Daemon. Now, I'm not gonna say that Daemon's gonna get wiped off the map by a random falling meteor. However, I do think it's kind of a possibility that external factors get contemplated when wondering how to beat Daemon in the manga. Oh, let me fight Daemon in the lava dimension, because if he happens to trip and fall into some lava, that lava doesn't have intent and therefore won't be reflected. And that's it. All the possible ways that I believe that one could defeat the current strongest character in Boruto. But what do you guys think? How do you think Daemon's perfect defense could be overridden? Tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Technically, there is another way. Just get Ada to fall in love with you and then tell her to tell Daemon to self-destruct.